So I am Saurabh Sandhir. I run product management at Nuage. And the topic I'm going to talk about today uh, brings together a lot of themes that have been talked through the morning sessions as well as by David in the session prior. <coughs> Essentially, the themes around merging NFV and SDN, SD-WAN, and the role of edge computing, things like universal CPE and security. So I just wanted to start off by a couple of introductions. First is the introduction to Nuage itself. I'm sure many of you are familiar with Nuage. If not, we are a venture of earlier of Alcatel Lucent and now of Nokia. The best way to describe us, we are a startup within the larger organization. As far as the operations, the innovation is concerned, we operate like a startup. But it's the mothership that comes into play when you're talking about sales, service, and fulfillment. And it's important to point out these things because as you take a technology like SD-WAN and go from a POC to a deployment, these all become material. It's not just about technology, but we do focus very much on technology. And our mission statement is to make networking as instantaneous and readily consumable at compute, which means bring the cloud consumption model to networking. We started by what we have done essentially, which is very different from the rest of the SDN market, is we created a platform, a centralized platform for SDN. Uh, composed of a centralized policy plane, which we call VSD or Virtualized Services Directory, uh, SDN controller, VSC, which is a range of stateless VMs, and it is based on the well-known SROS. So it's the same routing code that runs in all the top-tier service provider networks across the globe. With this platform, we started with a data center solution, combining this platform with vSwitch endpoints. We essentially had virtualized cloud services as our data center product, which provides policy-based automation for the data center. And then we expanded using the same platform, extended it with uh, x86-based merchant silicon CPEs to create a SD-WAN solution. So our, our differentiation, if I had to specify in one line, is this ability to provide this boundaryless or end-to-end -end networking policy and control all the way from a branch endpoint into the data center, be it VMs, bare metal, or containers, as well as hybrid connectivity that goes into the public cloud. Now, the second, second introduction I was talking about in terms of SD-WAN itself, Chris already described it, but here's my 30 seconds on it, is essentially if you look at current generation enterprise VPN technologies, they are extremely rigid. They are extremely inflexible. Typically, you have a typical one type of a network. This is typically an MPLS or VPLS. Depends on whether you're going L3 or you're going L2. It's dependent on the transport. You have a specific device type. It's highly proprietary. It's, it has the control management data plane in one form factor, and it's location dependent. If the provider is able, is, has the connectivity at that location, you can get it. And often, very often, the time to service is months. And, 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 it's, and any changes, again, require a truck roll. As opposed to this, the SD-WAN model is essentially, now you look at the same device, you take the control plane and management plane and move it to the cloud. The CPE replace it with a x86-based CPE. And, and as a result of which, what you can do is you can create service overlays that extend over any kind of a network, or any kind of an underlay. So it could be over internet, it could be over MPLS, it could be over 4G LTE and you have a logical, secure, automated network that, that brings you the same functionality as the previous generation enterprise van, but not just this. The value add here is also in terms of things like application awareness and value added services that we're going to talk about. So that's, that's SD-WAN for you. But there's a fundamental problem. If you look at what the enterprises are looking for, with the right SDN, what they're also looking for is a range of value added services. And they want it in the same cloud consumption model that we spoke about SD-WAN earlier, which means on-demand, programmable, managed, and provisioned through a cloud form factor. And the traditional model in terms of value-added services for the branch has been in terms of fragmented appliances. First of all, what are these value-added services? These are everything from security. It's a key use case, IDS, IPS, firewall, even NAT, URL filtering, DPI analytics to other things like SBC and VoIP servers and expanding into things like IoT agents as well as wireless LAN controllers. Today, these services are delivered in a very fragmented appliance form factor. There's no unified control or policy plane. They are managed node by node. In case you want to extend to the cloud, as David was mentioning earlier, because you want to provide some of these complementary functions from the cloud, you have to do that manual stitching. Finally, there is very rigid traffic steering. You have to decide a priori what kind of traffic traverses your firewall or what kind of traffic goes through your IPS or IDS. There's, bottom line, there's lack of flexibility. It leads to a lock-in, 
and if the operational cost is high, both in terms of time and money. What you want to move to is a consolidated platform with centralized cloud policy and control and on-demand extension to the data center. And this is reflected in the SD-WAN buying behavior. If you look at some of the studies, some of the analyst work that's going on, people do want to get, for example, security and WAN optimization with SD-WAN. They want to purchase firewall with the service itself. So how do you solve this? What is the right method to do this? The right method to do this, as far as the way we look at it from a nuance perspective, is to have flexible model for enterprise branch value-added services. And we're talking about three models to be very prescriptive. First, it embedded services itself. These are things that are not necessarily, there's a little bit of cheating, these are not VNFs. They have nothing to do with NFP, but they are part of the base, base SD-WAN software. They are part of the base routing and forwarding software that's provided by Nuage. They are things like NAT, they are DHCP, L4 ACLs, application-aware ACLs, expanding into things like URL filters, IDS, IPS. The goal here is, again, flexibility. They, where you don't want a full-fledged firewall, where your site doesn't permit a broad enough CP that can host functions, you get these functions as part of the Nuage package. The second model is service chaining. And here it comes in two flavors. One is the service chaining to a central office or a point of presence, as, as David was talking about the role of point of presence as central offices, as these distributed data centers in the telco environment. The second, uh, second is in terms of SaaS security services. These are chaining or interfacing with a cloud-hosted service such as Zscaler. Typically, people want enterprise traffic going to the SaaS sites, Office 365 or SFDC, to traverse through Zscaler. So that's the second model, service chaining. And we'll talk about this, why, what is the bottleneck to service chaining today and how we can resolve it. The final model, which is the one we are introducing now, is hosted on-prem. People call it universal CPE. Some people call it fat CPE. What we call it is a branch in a box. The reason is, we believe this is a way to provide all the functionality needed to operate a branch from a networking perspective in a single form factor along with a unified policy. And here, other thing worth pointing out from our perspective is the role, this can be VMs or containers. We don't want to limit ourselves to VMs. Clearly, the value-added services market right now is VM-focused. We see it evolving into containers, and ultimately, the choice goes back to deployment, choice goes back to, into the hands of the customers that's where we want to support both VMs and containers. So the, this is another visual way of encapsulating what, what was said in the previous slide in terms of the central uh, unified and flexible platform. The flexibility part is these app instances or these app boxes are really your VNFs. Again, VMs, containers, they could be hosted on the CP, the embedded model or the hosted model when they are uh, add-ons, chained into the central office or the data center or they could be in the public cloud, or finally, they could be cloud hosted, such as a Zscaler instance. Now, depending on the size of a branch, for a small, small branch office, embedded services may be good enough. Sometimes good enough is good enough. In, for some sites, small sites, again, chaining is probably the solution that you want to provide, or some of the more heavier function. In other cases, you want to host these services on the CP itself. What is important to know is it's not just about hosting or chaining, it's also the combination of this cloud centralized control and policy plane that is very important to have a unified view here. Because while you can have multiple models here, the unification needs to happen at and abstractions need to be provided in a way that is uniform across all three models because that's how, as a telco operator, you can consume this service to create a higher order business service. Of course, the other thing that we are not discussing today is the fact that the Nuage platform, given our routing DNA, given what we use is highly scalable, multi-tenant, which again plays a big role when you are trying to create this end-to-end -end platform. Let's quickly look at service chaining here. The problem with SD-WAN service chaining, or when you're trying to do service chaining from branch to data center, is the fact that the WAN and the data center are two completely disjoint domains. What that means is, in terms of, well, at a data plane level, there is no unification. You typically are running VXLAN over IPsec or some flavor of IPsec on the WAN side, for SD-WAN. You have VXLAN or another encapsulation on the, on the data center side. There's no way to switch, stitch the two. You have to manually define the rules as part, of a, as part of a PE or as part of a data center gateway as to how the two get connected with each other. The other aspect is that from a control place perspective, again, separate domain and they have separate policy. That's the challenge with 
service chaining from the branch into a data center. It doesn't matter a CO, uh, CO or a point of presence. The way to solve it with the Nuage platform, because it offers integrated policy and seamless control, you can do it with a single platform. What that means is from a branch location, you can directly refer to a VM endpoint in a data center and redirect to it. What that also means is you can have policy, for example, ACL, that spans the entire domain. I'm not going to talk about how it works, but again, it goes back to how the platform is structured, a single platform for data center and WAN, and the importance of service chaining or the, the role of it in ensuring the seamless service chaining as a, as a value-added service option is important. Now, the new form factor, we spoke about embedded functions within the platform itself, service chaining, the importance of seamless service chaining, but then there's a hosted model, what you know, UCP or FATCP, what we call branch in a box. And the idea here is to take a range of these or facilitate a range of these value-added services to be hosted on the CPE itself and to be managed from the centralized policy plane for SD-WAN. One important part here, while this box, which is the CPE, we call it NSG in uh, Nuage terminology, has the Nuage logo, it's a completely commodity merchant silicon box. It is, we get it from ODM vendors, we are not ashamed to say it, and if anybody wants to get it directly from the ODM, we support it. Of course, if you want to leverage the, new, the Nokia service approach supply chain, you are welcome to get it from us. So that is an important part in terms of the hardware we use as the, as the underpinning for, for our CPE and for hosted plat as a hosting platform for value-added services. In terms of the overall solution architecture, the way it's structured is if you look from bottom up, at the bottom most part you have the CPE. We run a KVM hypervisor here, or in case of containers, we run a Docker container environment that is used to host a range of these value-added functions. The chaining of these functions happen through our OVS-based forwarding code that runs on the CPE itself. And the third thing that happens here on the device itself is resource monitoring and health checks that are again localized. The communication channel between this device and the centralized policy plane is the same community secure, tamper-proof secure communication channel that we use for booting up the CPE, for pushing down forwarding rules to the CPE. That is very important in terms of having a secure, isolated, and well-defined or a well-contained infrastructure for hosting these functions. The second part is the policy plane itself. This is what's the policy plane or what is the policy plane for SD-WAN, and it has been extended to become a lightweight VIM and a lightweight VNF manager. What it provides is a catalog or a repository for VNFs. It also provides lightweight lifecycle management, which means creating VNFs, which means bootstrapping VNFs, deleting, and upgrading. All that is offered and is self-contained within the Nuage software stack. It also provides policy instances Policy comes in two parts. In terms of being able to define where and when a particular VNF needs to be installed, which sites, which enterprises, which geographies that you define here. The second policy part is in terms of what kind of traffic is to be attracted by these VNFs. The local traffic chaining on the CPE, what kind of policies need to go in there, that is defined as part of the centralized plane as well. The third component, very important from a telco perspective, is the integration into a higher level orchestrator. This is your NFBO or a service orchestrator. This is where the business service is actually defined. And this is done through a range of REST APIs. And I'll talk about the uniqueness as far as these REST APIs is concerned in the next slide. The key benefits of this approach, and we have we spent inordinate time of amount of time thinking through what the right approach here is. In benefit in terms of this open as but well-contained approach is, first of all, from an orchestration perspective, there's a single point of integration. If you have thousands of NS, uh, CP endpoints, tens of thousands of CP endpoints in case of some of the largest customer networks that we deal with, you don't want to expose all of those to the orchestrator. So this system, there's a single API to what the orchestrator consumes is a service construct. It doesn't have to deal by node by node basis with each of these endpoints. That is important. The second part is the openness. We have built this architecture, we have built this solution, and it's open to any sort of VNS. Some of our competitors have been offering their own services. We are very clear in terms of where our core competence is. It is in terms of providing the network infrastructure. It is in terms of network automation. We look at best of beat partners. 
And even in terms of the, whose VNS we host, there are a few names here, and I'll show you a lot more in the next slide. Finally, there's the aspect of security. I spoke about security in context of this is why it's a well-contained system. The same channel that we are using for managing the CPE, we're using for pushing forwarding rules, is used for VNF management. The scalability part comes from two points. First, it's a distributed processing model. So the heavy lifting is done locally on the device itself through LiveWord, to be specific, as well as for the fact that the way we do service chaining, there's no tromboning of traffic involved. So there is no centralized forwarding VNFs that you have to ping pong between to get service chaining right. The, this shows up in the massive partner program we have, completely open in terms of you see a range of best in breed value added service providers. But I want to reiterate, these are the ones we worked in terms of a joint go to market, but you are free to host any VNF possible on this platform with this approach. A slight digression around security, but one which I believe is very important. This is, so with this infrastructure of having embedded functions with service chain and hosted on-prem, you have a range of security options to data plane security. But this is necessary, but not sufficient. In the morning, Sean from Verizon used the term security built in, not built around. For that to happen, you need visibility across the network, pan network flow visibility, and dynamic event trigger policy so that the actions in terms of when things are redirected to a particular VNF happen based on event basis rather than on all the time. And towards that, we have a complementary solution we have, which we call virtualized security services, which is, which is, again, two sides of the same coin as far as security is concerned. That provides visibility and security analytics. It takes flow data from all of the network endpoints your CPEs, or even in the data center, could be vSwitches, provides a clear insight in terms of how the traffic flows are, what the security incidents are across at a pan network level. And the second important thing is provide dynamic security automation. You can create programmatic instances that come into play based on certain events. And this will clear with, become clear with the next example here, where we want to prevent malware from an infected uh, infected branch from getting into the rest of the network. Now, you don't want to send, and here the IDS is running in the data center, you don't want to forever chain or send traffic from the CPE into the firewall. It's just too expensive. It's too much res resource intensive. What you want to do is, based on analytics through VSS, you want to identify certain events, maybe thresholds being crossed, maybe certain amounts of ACLs being breached, and based on that, you want to program policy so that when that happens, there are alerts, and the traffic redirect happens. This dynamic programmability is, again, key and essential as when we talk about SD-WAN and security. Now, it's trying to, to bring it all together, we believe with Nuage we have the most comprehensive SD-WAN solution. It has all the essential elements in terms of being transport agnostic, in terms of how we do WAN management. There is application awareness, the value-added services part we spoke about. And, f and very importantly, the advanced networking infrastructure, because we use a carrier-grade OS as our underpinning, we have multi-tenancy and scale that is unprecedented in the market. But the proof of this pudding is really in the deployments. And this is just, just a quick snapshot of some of the folks, there are the, some marquee names here, including people in this room, whom we have been, who are using our product for real-world deployments, not just Spox. And these are just the public names. As we go through the next few weeks and months, you'll see more and more. And I want to close out just taking one example. Tell us, because we are here in the Americas, a tier one Canadian operator. They are using us to launch, uh, they're launching a SD-WAN service for SMB market. And what they needed was a scalable product that supports the consumer base or the customer base, but also the fact that they wanted some kind of stickiness and a greater share of the wallet using the value-added services which is provided using the flexible framework I spoke about, the embedded services, chaining, and the hosted services, which we call branch in a box. That in mind, I'll stop here. Thank you very much.